Hi, I'm Kerry Dow, Power and Control Specialist for Van Meter. Today, I will show you uh, the Micro 870 LE processor connecting up with a PowerFlex 525 drive. The Micro 870 LE is key. Uh, the E in there indicates that it can do class one tags now when you mate that with a PowerFlex 525 drive. In the past, when you've connected the 525 up to a Micro 850 or, or really 800, what you name it, processor, you could only, you'd have to create your own tags. This is the, the 870 and 850E processors already have that embedded. So once you connect that up, you will be able to access predefined tags. So you don't have, not have to waste any time at all on adding tags. It'll save a lot of time. Number one, you're going to have to have uh, connected Components Workbench, known as CCW, everyone calls it CCW, um, you'll need version 21. Any previous version will not do the class one tag, so that's key number one. That means you have to go out to Rockwell's website, www.ab.com, and it brings me right to there. I go to my downloads, and here you can do, uh, you can actually do a search here. And I would do sample code, uh, and you can see it pre-populates. Um, you'll want to get version 21. Click on that, add to download cart. Once it's in there, you can click on the cart, and you can say download now. Um, I am not going to go any further because I've already done that, and it is a huge file. Uh, it's a large file, so you'll want to set it, and it'll take you depending on your internet connection, it'll take you a while. What you'll probably want to do next is being that everything will be ethernet in this case, you will connect your computer up to, uh, you know, in this case, I'm going through my computer uh, USB to ethernet port and going into a switch, uh, an unmanaged switch, which then is connected to the PLC and also connected to the, the drive. And then that all goes back to my computer. So on here, when I'm configuring it, I can see both devices. The next step would be then to add your objects that you're connecting to. So if you have successfully downloaded uh, version 21 of Connected Components Workbench, you'll see an icon here on your desktop that says Connected Components Workbench. You can double click on that and it should show you right here right away what version you've got. So that's the opening screen that you see when you first open CCW and we can go right in and start adding in our components. So I can click on new. It will predefine a project whatever, it's just a consecutive, it will go, if you don't change it, it'll just be project 137. Um, I'll just do a demo test, I will call it and it will save it in this location here. You can change that with your browse button, but I'm just gonna hit create. So you'll get the add device screen. The first thing you wanna do is go to your controllers. And in our case, we have an 870. Now, the two current PLCs that can do class one tags are the, uh, I think it's 2080, I think it goes like an L870E, and 850E respectively. Each one, the key feature is the E in that part number. And the part number is located on the front of that PLC. It will show you what that is. But I have the 870E. Here's the L70E. And I have the QBBN, the 24QBBN. So I'm gonna select that and hit select. That's already added on there. I'm going to hit add to project. So all I'm doing is adding the actual hardware that I have to my software in CCW. So it kind of builds uh, kind of its predefined uh, program structure here. And one of the first things I'm going to do is go to Ethernet and verify that I have an IP address so when I download to it, uh, so in this case I'm going to call it 192, 168, 1, and 25. 
and my subnet mask pre-populates at 255, 255, 255, zero. And so when you download it, it will actually download that uh, uh, IP address and subnet mask, so you'll be able to connect to it uh, Ethernet-wise. So it'll just tell me that the controller will be overwritten with the current project content that I uh, put on just the things I just changed on this as I added these. So I'm just going to hit download. And you'll see download is complete. Change the controller to remote run to execute controller project. I'll say yes. So we're, right now we're in remote run. But one thing we have not done yet is add uh, a drive. So I'm going to disconnect and I'm going to go up to this little icon which is add device to the project. So I'm going to add now, we first added the controller, now we need to add the drive to our project. So I'm going to go down to my drives and we currently have a 520 series and we have a 525 and we have that one. You'll see multiple ones like if you have a multiple drives on, on a communication network, then you would select, or select that. Uh, if you have multi-drive with a uh, drive that has a, an additional card, which is this E2P card, signified by that E2P, there's a port that goes in and out, and you can daisy chain basically Ethernet uh, to each drive. So if you had five drives, you could connect it up that way. You would not, you would need to select this. So in our case, we have the, built-in Ethernet port, which is signified by just the 525 here, because we don't have multi-drive. We don't have, we only have one drive. So I'm going to select that. That selection is there shown, and I'm going to go add to project. Now because I'm adding it and I know I want my speed source and start source uh, through Ethernet, because everything is Ethernet on this, I will want to go in and make some changes to my uh, drive's parameters right away before I download screen. So if I go back here, I'm in the processor. Now that I added the 525, you can double click on it. And then right here, you get populated with the overview of kind of what generically it is. And then you get into parameters as the next selection. So within parameters, if you know a specific parameter that you want, you can just go into a filter value. Like if you wanted the, uh, uh, to know what your uh, speed reference is, you can go SPEE, -E, and oh, it brings up anything with, that has the letters SPEE -E in it, which narrows it down quite a bit when you're dealing with hundreds of tags. In this case, I'm going to start right away with the motor data. I know I have a 230 volt motor. I know that it's 60 hertz. My overload current, I think, is 1.4, if I remember from my previous settings. And I will set that at 1.4 as well. It's a 1700 RPM motor, so it's four pole. We'll leave that at four. 1700 is the RPM. And KW, uh, I think we have a 0.25 KW uh, motor and being that I am just doing no load on this I'm instead of letting it default its senseless vector control for the torque performance mode I'm going to change that to volts hertz which would be typically what you'd use for a fan or pump application these are your generic settings or, or I should say the uh, default settings uh, 10 second accelerate 10 second decelerate um, our stop mode, instead of a ramp, which will use that 10 second ramp, I'm going to just do a coast CF. CF just means clear fault. So when you hit the stop button, it will also clear faults. I typically do that. Uh, start source, like I said, it defaults to keypad. I'm going to change that to ethernet. And same with our speed reference. I want to do that through the program because I want to show you through the class one tags, I can do that. So I will go down to Ethernet IP. So there that is. Source 2, that's just digital terminal block if you choose to use that. Source 3 is the same. It doesn't matter. I don't think you need to change this, but I just change it so all three are different. 
I know in the past it made a difference. You would sometimes just disable those if you're not going to use them. But uh, in this case, I am just doing, uh, I will do set this to drive potentiometer. So anyway, those are all changed now. The last thing I know I need to do is make sure that the IP address, so I know that's C128, is the, let's see, 128 I believe. We need to change that from boot P to parameters. So it looks at its parameters when we uh, do our IP address. Now here's the first octet of the uh, IP address here. So I'm going to set this at 192. 168 is the second. Uh, so it goes basically parameter 129, 30, 31, and 32 for the, the four octets uh, of the IP address. One, and I'm going to set this at 21. Now the subnet mask will be the same as the, the controller subnet mask. That was 255, 255, 255, and zero. And that should take care of those settings. When you're on the main Micro 870 processor, you go down to this lower left corner, you go to Ethernet and modules, you can add a module. So the, dry, or the, the uh, PLC needs to see this as an option. So I am going to add not a generic device but I'm going to add a 525 EE net which is the onboard built-in Ethernet port of that drive. I'm going to just call it PowerFlex 525 and I am going to give it the IP address of what I did when I did the parameters of it. I'm going to go 192 .168.1.21 and it's set up in velocity mode everything should be set there 20 milliseconds is pretty quick to update that VFD most VFDs don't need to be you could go probably 100 milliseconds and be fine it just depends on your process and how picky you are and how many times you want to go out and scan that uh, uh, device I hit OK uh, we have added the PowerFlex 525 drive to the PLC program. So it, it was in our, as a device here, but it wasn't linked to our global variables. So doing, adding this module as something we want to link to within the processor was done by going into modules, adding, and then selecting the proper one that we're connected to. In this case, it's the built-in Ethernet port of the PowerFlex 525 drive. So now I will download. So I'm going to hit download. Download is complete. It'll just always prompt you to go to remote run to execute controller project. I want to, so I'm going to say yes. And just kind of as you're working with your PLC here, um, in your upper right corner, it will always give you what the IP address is uh, that you're working with for that processor, or yeah, for this PLC here. So um, if you ever like, oh, what did I set that IP address? You don't have to go too far to look for it. It's usually right in that upper right corner. So we are in run mode. Uh, we have added the module, which was the 525 now. Now we should see our global variables, and this is what is unique about the, the E in this part number of the uh, uh, micro 850s and 870s in our case. Go to global variables, you see the regular I.O. This is the digital outputs here that are you can define as, as needed for each respective one. You have uh, digital inputs here and look at the bottom now. Now we have PowerFlex 525 inputs and outputs. So if I go to the 525 output, we have our logic commands. And this is, in our comments, they're already predefined. We know what our stop is, our start is, our jog, and so on. So I'm just going to verify that we didn't fault the drive out when we, uh, when we reset it. And if we want now, we can go to our frequency command which is here. Um, basically, it's off of a basic uh, of 100. So if you want 30 hertz, you got to give it a value of 3,000. So if I'm going to set that at 3,000 to run at half speed, basically half of 60 hertz. 
So I'm going to set that at 3,000 3, and I am going to go to my logic and hit start and I think we should run. So that it's a, a momentary start. So you can see that the motor is currently running right now and it's running at 30 hertz and the drive will also display that. And I can also find that input to verify that as well. So my class one tags now are also showing a feedback of 3000, which is the raw value of 30 hertz. And then if I want to issue a stop command to this, I have it set to coast to stop, so it should just coast as, as, as inertia will give it. So I will stop it, and it pretty much stops uh, pretty quickly. In the past, you had none of this. You had to do a message instruction and you would have to then figure out what each word is that does. I mean, you, you have everything from start, stop, jog, stop, start, jog, <laughs> clear faults, forward, reverse. Um, there is all kinds of stuff that, uh, that is all predefined. If you wanted to go at full speed, you could run that at 6,000, that's 60 hertz. I think the drive is set up, it will probably only go to uh, 60 hertz so we'll set that in there and we can hit start here and you'll notice that the motor runs a little faster if you want so I will hit start and we'll ramp her up. Now as you can see I'm demonstrating everything from the actual global variables that are available on the P within the PLC program but as you know you would typically write this in code right now if I'm going to add a program like what I just demonstrated by just going to the raw tags, um, I can now disconnect because I don't, I can't do it online. And I can go into programs, uh, right click, go add, and I can do structured text if you like to program in that. Or I can do ladder diagram, which I'm more familiar with, and there's also function block diagram. Now there are all kinds of user defined function blocks if you want to program using that. You can go out to that PCDC download center at AB's site and you can download those and uh, utilize those as needed. But basically what I showed you, um, you can do everything uh, using the class one tags. They're all predefined. And then how you go about programming it is your own personal touch. All right, well, thanks for following me through this process of connecting up to the PLC and going to the drive here and demonstrating the class one tags on the micro series PLC. Uh, if you have any further questions, please contact your local uh, power control specialists and they can assist with you. Thank you very much.